Okay, in this week's video, I wanna talk about PRF and gingival grafting. And um, a lot has been done in this field, and I wanna give an up-to-date on where we are today in this field. Now, we know today, of course, if you do have gingival recessions, a lot of these are being treated today with uh, PRF. There are certain inclusion criteria, of course. You need a certain two millimeter band of keratinized tissue, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm not gonna go into all the details. Like I said, you can read uh, textbook chapters that were written by both Alina and Alexander uh, Alum, who are located at USC, that presented um, in 2016 how to do some of these grafting procedures. Now, you see a lot of these cases that can lead to quite nice aesthetic outcomes, a natural approach. Like I said here, band of keratinized tissue. Um, they use the VISTA approach that was pioneered by Dr. Zadeh. And uh, instead of using collagen, they create two incisions, full thickness flaps. Instead of collagen, you can put platelet-rich fibrin in there, and this will lead to very nice outcomes. So a lot of credit goes to you know, his team for, for doing some of this work. Other methods we've seen as well, Dr. Zucchelli do some very uh, beautiful work with uh, PRF as well. In this case here, you know, band of keratinized tissue, he can raise the flaps. And then of course, if you use platelet-rich fibrin, which is of course much better for soft tissue healing when compared to hard tissues, you know, you can close up, suture up and have a nice aesthetic outcome. So advantage here, of course, you could probably do this as well with just corona advanced flap, but you know, PRF helps with soft tissue healing and um, you know, less morbidity for your patient if you use platelet-rich fibrin in such cases. Now, when you look at the literature, there's been a lot of work on this topic. So here's a paper by uh, many, many different colleagues over the years, and you'll always see Miller class one or two. That's where it's obviously most effective, not effective for Miller class threes or fours. And um, when you look at the treatment, they always compare coronary advanced flap with or without PRF, and you get better results typically with PRF. When you look at Emdogain versus PRF, no difference. Connective tissue graft versus PRF, no difference. Connective tissue graft versus PRF, no difference for root coverage. So, you know, very similar results, but it has to have the right inclusion criteria. That's the real key here. You have to select your cases properly. And in these cases here, when you do have these digital recessions, you need that band of keratinized tissue. Um, more recently, I, I I did a bigger meta-analysis with some colleagues, um, and Vittorio deserves a lot of credit for some of this stuff, a, a colleague from Brazil. We looked at all of the studies up to 2020, comparing corona advanced flap versus PRF, connective tissue graft versus PRF, endogain versus PRF, amniotic membrane versus PRF, uh, as well as connective tissue graft versus connective tissue graft with PRF, okay? And in these studies, the more you see it go this way, the more it favors PRF. So when you look at coronary advanced flap versus PRF, there is an advantage to use PRF here. You get better root coverage, that's for sure. However, when you use connective tissue graft versus PRF, you get a better result with connective tissue graft, okay? And that's very important as well, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. When you look at endogain versus PRF, about the same. When you look at amniotic membrane versus PRF, a little bit better for PRF. And when you add PRF to connective tissue grafting, uh, better results when you add the PRF here. Okay, so PRF does improve root coverage when compared to CAF. It's better to use connective tissue grafts in these cases, and we'll talk more about inclusion criteria in a few slides. And there's really no data showing that PRF is better or worse than endogain or amniotic membranes. So again, the limit here is that if you have keratinized tissue, you need to use a connective tissue graft. Okay, there's no way around that. And when you use connective tissue graft in these cases, uh, I actually learned this from uh, Dr. Michael Picos down in, in Florida. He always would take PRF and actually put it in the, in the harvest site, okay, in the, palatal, in the palate. So you take out connective tissue graft, you put back in PRF to help with the healing, and that made a lot of sense. And I was able to find a study that was published in 2017 that looked at the ability for PRF to improve, you know, some of these free gingival grafts or palatal wound healing. Um, as a result of using platelet-rich fibrin. Okay, so those studies do exist as well. When we look at the root coverage, like I said, here's a nice case that was done by um, Dr. Delia Tuttle, who's located in California. And again, cases like this, you know, sometimes patients will not want a connective tissue graft. And you see a lot of these cases nowadays that are being grafted with um, platelet-rich fibrin. So here again, you know, they're using the vestibular incision technique and getting really nice healing. I mean, take a look at this case. Okay, 
the two sides, you, the, the recessions are basically gone. And this case is um, two, three years out. So, you know, it's, and look at the beginning. And then now they've even uh, done some um, aesthetic work as well uh, with crowns and, you know, really nice outcome here. And this is grafted with platelet-rich fibrin. So a lot can be done there. Now, very, very important. And what I want to highlight mostly is that it's good for these Miller class one and twos. Okay, very straightforward cases. Where it really fails is that it does not improve keratinized tissue width, okay? And that's been shown in the meta-analysis, which means that if you don't have that band of keratinized tissue, you're not getting it from platelet-rich fibrin. And that's where you really need to do a connective tissue graph for those cases. And again, beware here, it doesn't increase keratinized tissue, okay? And so long story short, you have to have proper selection criteria, and that's what the more recent articles and book chapters highlight on. They don't just talk about how great Pure F is for soft tissue healing, et cetera. Now it's really, it's working well when you use it here in these types of cases, but beware when you don't have connective tissue grafts or when you don't have keratinized tissue, that's when you need your connective tissue graph, okay? So read this most recent article. It's a systematic review that was done with many colleagues and um, it highlights when you can use PRF alone or versus when, you know, connective tissue graph is probably a better option in those cases. So I want to thank you guys for listening this week and I'll see everybody next week.